Welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at to help with that this week. Let's talk about what sleep really is, what it's for, and also eight tips to a healthier sleep wake cycle. Every human, animal, insect, and even, we think, plant does something that looks like sleep. So obviously, this is a pretty pivotal function. But why? It might surprise you to know that a lot of what we know about sleep is still theoretical. We all know that quality and quantity of sleep deeply affect how you feel, how much energy you have, how much emotional tolerance, or how little, and even your metabolic state. Research is showing that REM sleep is most critical for brain performance and memory formation, but the combination of REM and deep sleep are what help you to feel rested. Both the research and our intuitive sense of ourselves say the same thing. Sleep is when we heal, repair damage, tidy the house of our internal physical body, and also when our brain has the time to sort through and process the events and interactions of the day. Sleep is when a lot of our own physical maintenance happens, repair, regeneration, and detoxification. During sleep, you cycle through two major phases of sleep, which are rapid eye movement, or REM, and non-rapid eye movement, or non-REM sleep. Each cycle takes between 80 and 100 minutes, and Most people experience four to six cycles per night. Many people find they wake more easily between these sleep cycles. REM sleep is the rapid eye movement phase. Your brain shows similar activity to the activity that you experience during your waking hours. Dreaming usually happens during REM, although it can happen in other times as well. And in normal REM sleep, your muscles become limp to protect you from acting out your dreams. REM sleep is associated with consolidation of memories, helping your body to keep what's useful and discard what isn't necessary. This includes new learning as well as motor skills. REM sleep is also thought to be involved with emotional processing and brain development. Your amygdala, the area of your brain that's most involved in emotion, is very active during REM sleep. Stage one sleep or light sleep is kind of the first drifty phase of sleep where your brain and breathing both slow down, Your body becomes more relaxed, but still retains some muscle tone. Stage two of light sleep is becoming deeper as your heart rate and body temperature both decrease. This phase is like a transition into deep sleep, and brain activity starts to be characterized by sleep-specific brainwave patterns called sleep spindles and K-complexes. And then stage three is deep sleep. This is characterized by deep, slow brainwaves called delta waves. Waking from this type of sleep is extremely difficult and feels like dragging yourself out of deep water. That feeling is called sleep inertia. In deep sleep, your body works on physical repairs, including bone, muscle, connective tissue, and immune system activities. MTHFR certainly affects sleep. We know that basically because sleep problems are one of the most frequently self-reported symptoms, but there is literally not yet one study published (laughs) about the relationship between MTHFR and sleep. So we don't really know what's going on here. The only published thing is one case report, which was published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine, which was not actually an experiment. It's just a report on a patient. But this patient was found to have chronic insomnia that resisted medication and also cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. So they ran a full blood panel, found she had a high homocysteine, and because of that, did a genetic analysis. No surprise, she's a homozygous C677T mutation, and in this case, targeting her MTHFR polymorphism with methylcobalamin and folate resolved the sleep issue. So that's promising for us MTHFR folks. Circadian rhythms are deeply involved with sleep. Circadian rhythms are the 24-hour cycles that run all the time in the background to help your body do its functions and processes at the optimal time of the day. The sleep-wake cycle is one of the most essential circadian rhythms. Like many others, it's determined by a biological clock within your brain that's directly influenced by your environment. The strongest cue that influences this biological clock 
is light. Other factors in your environment have an effect as well, including exercise, social activity, and temperature. But light is the strongest influence. The darkness of the setting sun is the primary signal for your biological clock to begin the production of melatonin, which is your primary sleep hormone. Remember that if you spend your evening staring into the mini sun of a computer or TV screen, this action is stunted. Even with blue light blocking glasses or screen protectors, the amount of regular old light that isn't blue is still enough to do harm to this process. Also, the rays of the rising sun help to trigger cortisol release and boost neurotransmitters that get you up and moving through the day. Circadian rhythms promote consistent and re restorative sleep when they're properly aligned to your environment. When they're not, your circadian rhythm can actually promote insomnia and sleep dysfunction. One of the easiest ways to tell if you are aligned in your environment is that if you begin to notice that you're getting sleepy when it's falling dark and the sun is setting. Maintaining a healthy sleep-wake cycle comes down to setting a normal routine that optimizes your activity with your biological clock. And this is referred to as good sleep hygiene. Here's eight tips for a healthier sleep-wake cycle. Number one, maintain a regular sleep schedule. Try to wake up and fall asleep at roughly the same time every day, so say within an hour. Number two, do some sun worship. Get exposure to the sunlight as early as you can during the day. If this is difficult in your life, your lifestyle, or your geographic area, then consider investing in a full-spectrum therapy 10,000 lux lamp and use it for 15 minutes at the start of every day. This type of light has been shown to increase sleep quality and also improve scores on depression and things like cognitive function in the elderly. Number three, get physical activity. Exercising or having a physically active day consistently improves sleep quality and helps to maintain a healthy sleep-wake cycle. Number four, avoid caffeine afternoon. Caffeine afternoon has been shown to disrupt sleep cycles for most genotype. The one exception is CYP1A2, which are fast caffeine metabolizers, who can handle higher levels of caffeine possibly later in the day. Studies tentatively say between 3 and 4 p.m. Low lights before bedtime. Completely outside of the romantic potential for this habit, uh-uh, Low light and no screens for the two hours before your bedtime can help to ensure a healthy sleep-wake cycle and go a long way to counteract the constant staring into computers and TV screens that most of us do all the time. So why not try candlelight or soft lamps for the last two hours of the day? Tip six, short early naps. So napping has been shown time and time again to be amazing for your health, for your mental performance, your cognitive function, all of those things. But in terms of sleep-wake cycle, if the naps are too long or too late in the day, they can be disruptive. So best naps are early afternoon, shorter than 90 minutes. Tip seven, make a sleep zone. Your bedroom is your sleep zone and making sure you have a comfortable mattress, appropriate bedding for the temperature, and a calm, peaceful environment will actually help you to maximize sleep time. Number eight, consistent low-carb dinner. So dinner should be a reasonably light, balanced meal eaten at least an hour or two before bed. When you're looking down at your plate, divide it into quarters, right? Quarter of the plate should be a protein, meat, eggs, fish, beans, quinoa, something like that. Half of the plate should be vegetables, right? Fully half, just go for it. That does not include starchy vegetables like corn or potatoes. The remaining quarter of the plate can be a starch, that's great, like rice, corn, potatoes, bread, some other grain, whatever. If you want something sweet, make sure it's small and eaten right after dinner like a dessert, not giant and right before bed, like that impulse bowl of ice cream. Maintaining a healthy blood sugar overnight actually does help to keep your body in a deeper sleep state. Thank you so much for watching or listening this week. I would appreciate it if you like the show, leave a review. If you don't like the show, don't bother. Thanks. And uh, leave that on your favorite podcast platform. Next episode, we will talk about the four major categories that I see in my practice of sleep problems.